2020, it's just around the corner. A whole new year of possibilities. 365 days of a clean slate ready for us to fill in the blanks of what exactly we anticipate for this exciting and amazing new year. Well, it's been the tradition down through the years for many people to kind of write out a New Year's resolution. How many of you have done that in the past? You've somewhere in the course of your journey of your life, you've written out a New Year's resolution. How many of you kept it, New Year's resolution? How many of you tried to keep it at least for two weeks? How many of you tried at least for one week? How many of you tried for 24 hours? How many of you tried for one hour? How many tried and it just didn't matter, you gave up? Uh -huh. Well, then we got everybody included, finally. Okay. So we can all relate to this experience of New Year's resolutions. Here's some of my favorites i got to share with you. I was going to quit all my bad habits for the new year, but then I remembered nobody likes a quitter. At the beginning of this new year, I made a New Year's resolution to lose 10 pounds. Hey, I've only got 15 more to go. My New Year's resolution is to break my New Year's resolution. That way I succeed at something. I would lose weight for my New Year's resolution, but I hate losing. My New Year's resolution is to help all my friends gain 10 pounds, so I look thinner. I'm going for that one. My New Year's resolution is to try to simply remember why I've walked into this room. Yeah, right? Some of that, That's a good one for us to try to work on. Uh -huh. Yeah. How about one that we include as our New Year's resolution and a day-to-day -day resolution, and that is that we endeavor to be spiritually grounded, to be as spiritually grounded as possible. It's an amazing resolution that we claim in our hearts and our lives when we say, I want to be as grounded as I can be on a firm and solid foundation, because as this world unfolds all kinds of things that may be knocking me out or wind in my sails or taking the wind out of my sails or whatever it may be that it just sort of knocks you off of your kilter and you just seem like, wait a minute, I don't know how to deal with this. It's the joy of knowing that you've built a strong foundation and that you're grounded spiritually that enables you to face anything that's coming forward in the 2020 year. So as we claim this as our number one resolution, I am claiming to be spiritually grounded as never before. What we're really doing is that we're enabling something amazing to unfold and to be built upon that foundation for the great year to unfold on that solid ground and an amazing place for it to hold in stability. For our faith is never meant to be wavering. For our spiritual life is never meant to be in such a way that it is just caught up with any trend, but to be solid and strong, to be confident and assured. We create this strong foundation because it's a foundation that says, I know all things are good and all things unfolding for me. And in that, we're able to live a life of great expectancy. We know that every emotion that's going on within our life that's negative, every negative emotion is simply trying to tell us that we're out of alignment with who we really are. Because who you really are, the innate person within you, your true character, your divine essence within you is amazing, wonderful, perfect, is whole and complete. And when we embrace these negative emotions and negative feelings and negative thoughts, they're simply in conflict and not in alignment with our true self of who we really are. And that's why we create things like dis Ease, disease, uncomfortableness, sickness, whether it be emotional, mental, spiritual, that comes into our lives because we're not in alignment. We're not following in that wonderful connection. We're following in the wonderful pathway, following in the wonderful current, shall we say, of that which is our true nature, our true self, that true nature that you've been created in the divine image and likeness of God. And that which is you, the real you, the essence of you is that soul that's beautiful, loving, caring, compassionate, filled with all the components of the very character and essence of God. So we invite you then in this journey to sort of establish this solid ground by, first of all, clearing out to make room for what is yet to come. So today is a powerful moment where we're releasing and letting go to clear out, to make room for many new things. 
Many people at the end of the year will kind of go in and say, I'm going to clean out my closet to make new for a new wardrobe that's coming in. I may clean out my house, uh, get rid of some old furniture and sell it to get ready for new things to come in. Uh, I may get rid of some people in my life and relationships to get ready for new things to come in and new wonderful people and friends. So it is that what we are doing is we're sort of creating that vacancy, that void for all the new to come in within our lives. It's so difficult to receive something new when your hands are full, isn't it? Here, would you take this? And, whoa, I can't. I, I got so many things in my hand. And so today's spiritual exercise is I'm releasing, I'm letting go, that my hands are free to receive and to welcome all the exciting and new things that are available to me in this journey. Isaiah 43, which is our text that you read so beautifully, found in the back of your bulletin and on the screen is this. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. A passage the writer's trying to bring out the truth that they're trying to unfold for you is number one. Hello, are you ready to behold? Are you ready to behold? To behold is to see something. To behold the new thing that God is intending for you. For each and every day is the opportunity for something new to unfold. Jesus spoke about saying to be born again, to be born again, to be born anew, to have this wonderful experience within our life where our consciousness changes that from yesterday's thinking to today's new fresh thought and new opportunity. So it is we find this wonderful experience that we're called to come to a place of beholding something new is unfolding for us. Something new is just around the corner. Something new is coming to me now. But it challenges if you're not in the beholden mood, if you're not in the moment of saying, I see, I'm looking, I'm anticipating. I'm living in inspect expectancy of something new. We miss it. And part of our problem is we're, we're missing so much of the new that's unfolding for us in our life or intended for us is because we're holding on to the former things. And the passage says, remember not the former things. Let go of the former things. Let go of those pains and hurts and wounds of yesterday. Let go of those things that were said to you that you've been holding on like baggage that you've been carrying for far so long, far too long. Let go of these things because as you do, you're now creating an opportunity to behold something new. Even it says, don't even consider the things of the old. Don't even consider your yesterdays, your past. Oh, there's a lot of us who are looking at 2020, and we're carrying with us the ideas of what 2020 will unfold based on 2019 or 2018 or 1919. For some of us, it just depends on what year you may be choosing. <laughs> we go back a long ways. You know, so some of us were saying, wait, it's based on my past. It's based on the old. It's based on those kind of things. That's what I know. If it happened last year, it's going to happen this year. It's going to be just the same. Here it is to open our eyes to a fresh new thing. Now, we're talking spiritual eyes. We're talking looking at things with eyes of faith. Let's say I don't necessarily see the tangible, but I see the intangible. I see that God is doing something with the heart of expectancy. My vision is transformed from that which is looking only to the physical to now seeing the spiritual in each and every one, each and every thing, each and every moment, and each and every day. That's eyes of faith. Eyes of faith says, I believe for something. I begin to speak it now, and I begin to claim it. My eyes of faith say, I see 2020 being a, a fabulous new year. I see amazing things unfolding for me. I see through eyes of faith, and I begin to speak that which I see. I begin to claim it for my life. And how important it is that we do this work of claiming, claiming. And the power of claiming is found in such strength when we say, I am, I am. Wow, that's a powerful claim, isn't it? I am rich. Well, you're rich. You said you were rich. Well, then you must believe you're rich. If you believe you're rich, then you would live that you're rich, right? I am well. When you say that, you're claiming that within you and that wonderful power and authority to profess it. And when you do, you're speaking the faith that you have seen with the eyes of looking into the spiritual realm and saying, I see it. Now I speak it. I claim it for myself. 
And so it is. So Isaiah is bringing this truth to us that remembering not the former things or considering the things of old, behold, I am doing a new thing and it springs forth now. Now in this moment, it's springing forth. It's not further down the road. But we don't even have to wait till New Year's Eve for our goodness to unfold. We don't even have to wait till the strike, uh, uh, the clock strikes midnight. We don't have to wait for the ball to drop, the peach to drop, the banana to drop, the whatever's going to drop in some cities and countries around the world as they begin to drop something. We don't need to drop anything. We can claim it now because right now, in this moment, God is doing an amazing thing. And this is where we begin to open up our lives as we say, from here forth, I behold the amazing things that are unfolding for me. Through eyes of faith, I begin to now see them and claim them for me. I awaken to them. In our spiritual lives, if we're going to lay this kind of strong foundation, if we're going to be this grounded in our lives, one of the first things we've got to do is this clearing work. Any kind of builder will come into a subdivision or a potential subdivision. What do you see them doing? Clearing, clearing. Kind of sad to see them take out all the trees. Sad to see them take out all of the wonderful lush vegetation or whatever it may be, wherever they're building and bulldoze it all down. But they're getting ready to say that there's no obstacle in the way of our construction. We want to remove everything. So there's freedom of movement to build and to create that which our architectural plan calls for. Now we have an architectural plan of building an amazing spiritual life for 2020. It's filled with living in an expectancy. We have an architectural plan that says we are already believing for amazing things. We're building on 2019. And if you forgot the announcement, let me say it again. We have just created a sunny day account, something we've never had in 19 years. Now, let's build on that. That kind of prosperity and abundance that this church is experiencing, we have never had in all of the years of our history. To have it now is so amazing. And what will we take with us as we build on that? Let's clear out the obstacles for the architectural plan is set for us. To be a congregation that is flourishing, expanding, and growing in ministry in so many different levels. Now, as we begin to do this clearing work, Ephesians 4.31 says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, and clamor, and slander be put away from you, along with malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. It's talking to us about this wonderful releasing of what is it we need to do some work in examining to release in our lives. Bitterness. We need to look at wrath, our desire for revenge, our anger. Our slander, the words where we've said, torn someone down. Where we need to seek this wonderful spirit of forgiveness that is a cleansing work within our hearts and our lives. Let me tell you this. Every time you intend to do something spiritual in your life, the first step is clear the way. Clear the way. You're going to pray for someone. If you're going to offer a prayer treatment for someone, if you're going to do something for someone in a spiritual context, that unfolds for healing. What do you have to do first in your life is you have to do your own clearing for you. Quite often people will say, Pastor, would you pray for me? And I'll say, yes, but I need to do my spiritual work first before I pray for you. Because I want to make sure that I'm a vessel, pure, clean, and whole, fully acknowledging and recognizing my innate being and true nature. So allow me to pause, allow me to get away, or allow me to have some time, or let me pray for you, know that I'm praying for you tomorrow, or I'll pray for you later in the day. Because I need to do the spiritual work that I need to do in my life to prepare for the divine spirit to flow in and through me. I've got to clear the way. I've got to chop down the trees, shall we say, of slander and whatever words or thoughts I may have had. I've got to clear out my way for the construction and the unfolding of the goodness within me. So it is for each and every one of us. Call is, what are we doing that's clearing and making way for the highest and best? We find so many beautiful biblical examples for us. One of my favorite is the story of Ruth. Ruth, Naomi, and Orpha. Two sisters who had married brothers. They had married Naomi's uh, sons. 
and unfortunate circumstance unfold. And Naomi's father, Naomi's husband dies. Ruth's husband dies. Orpha's husband dies. Three widows gathering together and thinking this is, could be the worst case scenario of our lives. What are we going to do? This is the, uh, you know, in a world where it was so patriarchal and men led everything. A woman without a man, without some way of provision for her, seemed to be helpless and truly almost homeless. But Ruth sees new possibilities. And as Naomi says, I'm going to return back to my homeland, Ruth says to her mother-in-law, I'm going with you. I'm going with you. I see possibilities. I see a spirit of expectation. I see an opportunity for something to unfold within my life. I am here to let go of this old in this world that I've been living in. I'm going to move with you to the new land, to the new country, to where you're going. I'm going with you. And where do we find those beautiful words that we recite at all these beautiful weddings? Whether thou goest, I will go. And whether thou lodgest, I will lodge. And your people shall be my people. Beautiful words of commitment two women said to each other. Interesting. If we think about this, we find this beautiful promise unfolding there of saying, I need to let go of my past. I need to let go of my wounds. I need to let go of all the sorrow. I need to let go of everything that happened to me in 2019 that doesn't serve my highest and best. Because I'm moving on in a wonderful expectancy of something amazing unfolding in the new land of 2020. I'm going to be Ruth going with my Naomi. And my Naomi is this new year, this new promise of possibilities there for me. And I'm going to move. And where you go, beautiful promises, where you go, infinite possibilities, I'm going with you. And where you go and where you lodge infinite blessings and health and wholeness, I'm going to lodge with you. And whoever you hang around with, Spirit of God, that's so full of all abundance and grace and mercy, I am going to be with them too. And there too. You see, that's the wonderful spirit that we move in when we release and when we let go. We're open to all kinds of amazing possibilities to happen within our lives. You see, letting go of these things is helping you to move to a higher level. Excuse me. You must get to a higher level of consciousness if you're going to solve any of your problems. You can't solve a problem from the same level of thinking where the problem exists. So we want to move to a higher level of consciousness, a higher level of understanding. We want to raise this vibrational of a level of understanding and awareness of the divine presence of God. We want to say, I'm clearing out. I'm waking, making way for something new. I'm now living in this wonderful expectancy that I'm moving and operating at a higher level of thinking, a higher level of vibration. There's more love in me, grace in me. There's more patience in me. There's more compassion in me. There's more forgiveness in me. You see, because I'm clearing out all the obstacles, I'm making way for the fresh new intake of the divine within my life. So as we do, we release and we let go, and we allow these wonderful things to take us to a higher level of frequency. And that frequency sort of helps us shake free a lot of things. You know, when you're vibrating at a wild frequency, you know, you're moving really fast. Kind of shakes off the dirt and crash and blood, crud and all those things that have held you back because you're moving now in this higher level of frequency. You're operating in this wonderful awareness of I'm so full of divine love and that love is radiating at such power and presence. All the old resentments, wounds, hurts have no place. They don't stay here with us. I'm going to tell you this, that uh, imagine for a moment that you made this uh, wonderful promise to yourself that what you released and you let go of uh, would transpire in your life as you begin to believe for it. You're trying to say, well, what am I going to release? What am I going to let go? What, what, what can I do? Well, let me offer you some suggestions. How about I let go of past regrets? I let go of toxic friendships and relationships. I'm letting go of criticism and rejection that I've taken in personally. I'm letting go of trying to be perfect. I'm letting go of all doubts that I have about my future and my abilities to accomplish great things in the future. I'm letting go of things I can't change or can't control. I'm letting go of all fears that are holding me back 
from my dreams. I'm going to let go of trying to live up to other people's standards or expectations. And I'm going to let go of trying to win other people's approval. I'm going to let go of painful emotion. I'm going to let go of insecurities, unrealistic expectations, and negative thoughts. I'm going to let go of being dragged down by people's emotional outbursts and their problems. I'm letting go of drama. I'm letting go of my engagement in drama. I am going to be drama free. I'm loving that one. I'm going to let go of holding on to choices that I've made that have or have failed to make that didn't take me to my highest and best. And I'm letting go of playing the victim of circumstance. And instead, I'm taking responsibility for creating a life that is intended for me to live. So how do we then let go of this if we're struggling and we've carried it so long? We've carried it so long. It's like baggage that we're familiar with, right? We've got a set of luggage uh huh, that we're comfortable with. It's our Louis Vuitton bags. Uh huh. It's got all that emotional care and all that baggage of wounds and all those hurts. And we like it. It's kind of so comfortable to carry that baggage. And how are we going to let that go? Is a simple act of setting it on a piece of paper and setting it to fire, is that enough? Let me tell you this. That letting go experience is all about moving forward, not looking backward or existing backward or going backward in any kind of yo-yo experiences that we may have within our lives. You know, quite often we have these moments, I, I'm moving forward, I'm moving backward. I'm moving forward, I'm moving backward. You know, in this life, in our spiritual life, we have these moments where we're here, there, everywhere, we're cast all around, and we've got this challenge that we're working through of a yo-yo spiritual life, but our intention to release and let go is this, I am moving forward, I let go, and I am not looking back. What happens when we look back? Well, what do we know about Lot's wife? Called to leave, and to leave in a hurry, her homeland, to leave in, with great intentions, to move to new possibilities, but she couldn't let go of the past, couldn't let go of that what was there. And she turned around and she turned back, looking back at Sodom and Gomorrah, she became a pillar of salt in a metaphorical word, meaning that which is stagnant and able to be moved. You know, when we're constantly looking back Instead of looking forward, we become so stagnant, we too become like a pillar, a pillar of salt that's just hard to move and how to uh, move forward into a future and all of its possibilities. One of the best ways for us to move from our past to our future is to spend some time visualizing, casting a vision, visualizing what is my future all about? And as I visualize it, I visualize it free of all those things that I've intentionally let go. I see it free of the drama. I see it free of the worries. I free free of the stress, free of the emotional insecurities. On goes the list of the things that I encourage you to consider releasing and letting go. But I begin to visualize it. I begin to see it. I look and say, this is what my world looks like. I see it now and I behold God is doing this amazing new thing. And in that visualization, it enables us then to sort of unload our baggage, unload our uh, experience of our spiritual life as if you have gotten into this wonderful helium balloon basket, you know, and the balloon's above you and you're ready to take off, but you've got all those sandbags of weight around you. And as you begin to visualize and letting go, you begin to cut the cord on each one of those sandbags, and suddenly you begin to rise. You begin to take off. You begin to move to a new realm. You can see it now as you visualize that experience of your own self saying, I see my 2020. I'm in that helium basket, that, that uh, helium balloon basket. I'm ready for takeoff, and I snip, snip, snip. I cut, I release, I let go. All those things that I have thought would just anchor me and hold me from my highest and best. And I see as I rise new things that God intends for me. Behold, I see a new thing. I perceive it now. It's happening even now for I'm rising in this moment. I want to encourage you to 
engage in this experience in a powerful way of releasing and letting go today. I'm going to invite you to take this piece of paper. And we're going to, in the next few moments, offer a prayer that we dedicate this moment, this sacred moment of releasing and letting go to be more than just a ritual, but to be doing that which we intend within our lives that liberates and sets us free for us to be able to behold the new thing God has in store for us. So would you bow your heads with me in this moment? I invite you to quiet your mind and to call to your remembrance all those experiences or those things, emotions, or feelings that you need to release and let go. Call forth anything in your life right now that needs forgiveness. Anything in your life may have caused pain or hurt. Call forth those wounds, insecurities, fears, doubts. Psalm 51.10 says, Create in me a new heart. And this moment is all about that, allowing the Spirit of God to work within us to create a new heart. To allow this to happen. So I ask you, what needs to be healed? You'll feel the weight of releasing and breathing deeply, letting it go. Let go with every breath all the attachments to what no longer serves you. In your mind's eye, I imagine you're cutting the cords and the threads of discord or whatever it may be, enabling you to soar and to rock. And in this moment, as you Gather your thoughts of all that you intend to release and let go. We pray now, as the Spirit speaks to us, that the power of writing these words, symbols, or phrases down is a power of releasing and a commitment within our lives to move forward and not go backward. To clear and make way for new things to allow a grounded space to be there within our spiritual life as never before. Trust now in this process. And as you are ready, I invite you now to take your pen and write out on that piece of paper those things that you're ready to release and to let go. Take this moment of silence. As you do know that you're accepting responsibility for your life, for your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. And that you choose to take with you what you will into the new year. You get to choose it. And you get to choose what you will not. So turn over all those thoughts to release and allow the spirit then to do wonderful healing work within you. And as you write that, give thanks for what's about to transpire gently removing all that is not in alignment with perfect ease and in alignment with your true nature, the divine spirit. And when you're ready, I invite you to come forward now and to place that piece of paper into the flame as you come forward. Come as you feel comfortable. Amen.